everyone. So I have been getting a lot of people asking about the new movie that's out, What the Health. So normally I don't get involved in the food fight. I actually hate the food fight. A lot of you have heard me say it. I hear people fight more about food than politics or religion. It's something that actually bothers me and I try to stay out of it. I, my focus is on trying to help people optimize their health by looking at their important numbers. Um, if you have, you know, if this is an ethical issue for you, great. Then let's just call it what it is. Say that this is about your values, say that this is about your ethics. But when it comes to health, I really try to stay out of this idea that it's a food fight. Um, and it, it's just not something I, I like. I don't like the agendas behind them. So, um, and actually the agendas are okay. Just call it what it is. So, but I've been getting a lot of people, even people who are really healthy that eat a nor, you know, that just eat the way that we normally tell, suggest that people eat, um, suddenly becoming scared. And so I wanted to just address this and go through, I watched the movie and I tried to really watch it thoughtfully and objectively and like make a list of things I like and things that I thought, you know, that I, that I would comment differently to. So, um, just to answer your questions, I can't answer all of you individually. So I wanted to just answer this, uh, and go through this and give you a guide to go by. You can agree, disagree. I would love to hear your comments below, um, because this really isn't coming from a place of, I think being vegan is a good thing or a bad thing as far as being, you know, ethical or not. I'm not going to get into that fight. What I really want to address is the health issues, the studies, and what the movie represents. So, um, what I don't want people to do, my whole focus, my husband and I, what we talked about in our last book, The Brain Warrior's Way, the whole point of the book was to help you gain mastery over your brain and body and to not be a sheep, right? Don't follow other people just because they're doing it. Don't follow someone else's agenda. Don't follow... Um, the new propaganda, pay attention, be your own best health advocate, think for yourself, do it your way, know what you're actually reading, know what you're actually listening to or watching, including the news. I mean, all you got to do is watch the news now and it's just, it's crazy. You have to really think for yourself or you just get sucked in. So um, that's what I really want to address, okay, is that part of it. So like I said, if there there's clearly an animal rights active you know animal rights issue behind the movie and I'm okay with that but just say that and say that that's what it's you know part of it is about and that's okay and there's obviously a lot to do with health in there so and let's let's separate out the parts to do with health and 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 let's just shed some light on a few things so because there were a lot of really good points in the movie unfortunately they were also buried among some other things that I want to just sort of flesh out if we will. So I made a list of like, I literally like just put a list. Okay. These are the points that like, that I personally thought were really great points. And then his, here's where I thought that it went a little bit sideways. Um, things that I thought could have been done better or that I just didn't agree with. And so I just listed them out and the reasons why you can agree with me or disagree with me. So one of the things that was very obvious that I really liked about the movie was they talk about the dangers of processed meats. No question. There is nothing good about processed meat. Um, no question about that. And they talk about, um, they, they, they talk a lot about the disease model. So they operate a lot from the disease model, how our system focuses on a disease model that we treat disease rather than trying to heal people rather than trying to prevent illness. Could not agree more with that. The only issue I had was that when they talk about processed meats, they end up including pretty much all meat as opposed to like you, if you watch, they start including all meat regardless of quality. And they actually show pictures of different types of meat, um, that's not processed, but they're flashing pictures of processed meats, talking about processed meats, and then they're flashing pictures of other meat and they don't discuss like meat that is very clean. They don't discuss really the difference between industrial raised meat versus say true free range meat that is hormone free, antibiotic free, and it does not eating pesticide raised food. So that's, that's fed naturally. They don't discuss that. And that's what started to bother me. And then they start comparing, um, processed meat to nicotine and cigarettes. Okay. I can understand that because there, there are some stats that, that maybe are similar, I could even buy into that. 
But then throughout the movie, what I didn't like was that they would continuously flash pictures of, say, chicken grilling while they talked about tobacco and vice versa. They would show pictures of cigarettes and things like that while they're talking about meat. And so those two things, um, if, you, if you know anything about like NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, or even just advertising, right? They're creating those links. That kind of bothered me. So let's see. The other thing I didn't like was that it was a little bit one-sided. It wasn't a little bit one-sided. It was one-sided. Now, they're trying to make their point, so I understand that they're trying to make their point. But if you really want to make a point, then you would make your point more valid if you actually interviewed the other side. So when I was trying to I've done I've done the extremes. I was vegan for several years. Um, I wasn't that healthy as a vegan. So I think to be fair, we want to talk about people's individual health profiles. We want you to be healthy and we're going to help you create that. Um, some people I know are incredibly healthy as vegans. Some people are not. So we need to just look at what that looks like. And they should, they, I'm not going to tell them what they should have done. I think that the argument would have been stronger if they had interviewed the other side, if that makes sense. So when I, when I was, you know, going to these extremes, I, I would, I did the whole caveman thing. I did the vegan, I was vegan for several years and I wasn't quite getting what I needed. And I literally started interviewing. I've got so many health mentors, um, that I truly respect, including one of the doctors who was in the movie. Um, Dr. Joel Kahn is a dear friend of mine. He's vegan. He is a cardiologist and he is my go-to person. If I'm working with someone who's vegan, he's great. Okay, so I thought that what he said in the movie was pretty rational. I also know that they take clips and sound bites of what, you know, people's interviews. So I know how that works because they do it to my husband all the time and it's quite annoying. Um, but he was pretty rational with what he said. And I know that they didn't post everything that he said. They take what they want of his interview. Um, but I actually like what he said. I would have liked it better if they had included Dr. Hyman and doc another cardiologist who I respect very, very much is Dr. Houston who is not vegan, okay? He's actually more of a caveman. Um, and then there's also Dr. Davis, Dr. Perlmutter, Dr. Cordain, and of course my husband. Um, and the reason I would have liked it if they had included some of those interviews along with all of the vegan doctors is not because of a food fight. It's because to be really fair and really honest, all of them get amazing, amazing, results with their patients. I know this personally. I know it to be true. They, they turn people's health around every day. I see it. I know it to be true. Okay. So what is the difference? Now, one thing, you know, the things that they talked about in the movie were, were accurate. Getting rid of, you know, some of the, the unhealthy fats and getting rid of the processed meats. No question. Not eating a protein heavy diet. No question. But what they all do is they all get rid of all of the garbage. They have people eat clean. And what I don't think the movie did well enough was talk about the benefit of truly eating clean, even if you're a vegan. Okay, so that was where I had a hard time with it. So whether you're vegan or you are eating 20 to 30% very clean protein, one of the things you really need to focus on is that the plant-based foods you eat need to be clean too. The meat needs to be clean. The plant-based proteins need to be clean. And so that really kind of bothered me and it wasn't, it was a little too one-sided for, for me. If I were actually as an objective person, someone who is trained to sort of like analyze things, I'd be like, it's too one-sided for me. They're obviously have an agenda. So, and I would say the same thing if it was the other side, because I've said the same thing to the other side. So just to be fair, I want to just put that out there. Um, one thing I liked was that this was good and bad. This was a point. Um, they talked about chicken. This was actually my friend Joel Kahn who said this. Chicken increases cholesterol based on volume. He didn't say it increases cholesterol like just in general. He said based on volume because it is eaten so much that that is what they're seeing an increase um, in people's cholesterol based on that. The only thing, and I have a feeling that they cut him off and only used what they wanted to. That's just my sense uh, because I know him. Um, he did not talk about quality at all. And he also did not talk about the fact that most, most of the doctors in our realm 
do not advocate that you eat large amounts. So if we're talking about being healthy, now, does the average person go out who doesn't have any education about being healthy? If this is, you're just getting started on this journey, maybe you do think that it's okay to eat 50 or 60% of your diet in those kinds of proteins, probably not the best thing, right? So that's why we actually to help people understand you should be thinking of very clean protein like medicine. You take it in small doses. And I do agree with them on that. You don't need nearly as much protein as people think you need. The, the average, you know, I, I don't know if it's the protein industry who like promoted, I don't know who promoted that. This idea that we need massive amounts of protein, it's not really accurate. Like new thinking is that that's not accurate. You do need small amounts of very clean protein. So that was a good and a bad thing. Um, but I, I really wish they would have, again, said that quality matters. I thought they did a great job on dairy. For whatever reason, I thought that was the best section in the movie. Maybe because there's more studies that are very clear on dairy. But I thought that actually was one of the better sections in the movie. So if you've watched the movie, what they talk about with dairy, right on. So um, really liked that. Um, so let's see. The, there was this one study, a meta-analysis. He actually shows the study. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying I couldn't find it. So if someone else has found it, if I watch a movie and someone shows me something that scares me, I'm going to go check it out. My suggestion is to you, check it out. Don't believe in other people's scare tactics, okay? So the meta-analysis he's talking about, talking about eggs. For a long time, eggs were considered just terrible, right? Well, they're not anymore. New studies have shown that eggs are actually not that bad. Not only are they not are they loaded with nutrition, but the studies have shown that eating dietary cholesterol does not increase serum cholesterol nearly as much as we thought it did. In fact, it's very, very minimal. So, and in fact, it also increases your, your good cholesterol, your HDL. So when he posted that, when he actually listed this in the movie and he showed this study, he said something, it's a meta-analysis, and he actually shows the name of the study, which I'm, I know that study, and then he actually says that it says that it compared, the study actually compared eating eggs to eating egg McMuffins, and they showed the text in the study. I'm like, what? Like, that would totally change my view on eggs if I actually knew that to be true. So, if any of you have ever seen where that is listed, I would like to know because I went and looked it up and I couldn't find it because that meta-analysis was actually a study that analyzed, like, I think it's 11 other studies and I couldn't find that in there. So, if some of you know that, I don't know if he was pulling the title of one study and that other piece from someone else's, you know, summary. I'm not exactly sure, but I couldn't find it. And I don't like it when I can't find something that someone tells me is in something. So if someone else knows wh what study he's talking about, please let me know. I'm always interested in hearing about that because I'm going to say this again. I say it all the time. I am not attached to my message. I am attached to learning. Fortunately for me, I don't sell anything. Yes, I've written books, but I write my books, The Omni Diet, Brain Warriors Way, they're all written on the current science and what I can find. I used to write that I thought agave was good when I was vegan. <laughs> and I, I was into the whole agave raw food thing. I still like raw food. Um, but I thought agave was great. And guess what? The studies came out showing that agave is terrible. So I changed my view on, I, and I started telling you guys. I used to say it, now I don't. It's based on the studies. I am not attached to my message. I am attached to learning. I am attached to the new studies as they come out. So I want to just point that out. If you guys can sh point me in the direction of a really good study and I'm wrong, please help me or educate me because I want to learn right along with you. Um, let's see. The thing I did that I think I hated the most was, and again, I think maybe they took what they wanted from this doctor's interview because the doctor's very well known. I would be shocked if he actually said this in these words. But what they put in the movie was that he said that sugar is good, that it's not bad. In fact, it doesn't do all the bad things that we now say it does, um, that it's not causing inflammation, that it's not causing diabetes. I almost fell out of my chair. 
We have so much information now, so many studies. I don't know how they're even going to claim to dispute that. And again, please, if you're going to say that, at least show the other side of the story. There is an amazing YouTube video that I think everyone should watch. Um, it's from a researcher at UCSF. It's called Sugar, The Bitter Truth. Please watch it. It's amazing. Um, so his, my, his name just slipped my brain for some reason. Some of someone out there knows what I'm talking about. So please, um, please watch that sugar, the bitter truth. Um, I, I don't know where they're even able to post that sugar does not cause inflammation, does not cause diabetes is not an issue. I, that for me right there, I had a hard time finishing the rest of the movie, but to be fair, I wanted to finish the rest of it because I don't believe in throwing the baby out with the bath. Oh yes, Dr. Yes, Dr. Ludwig. They are oh, Lustig. Dr. Lustig. Thank you. Dr. Ludwig is another one who does a lot on sugar. So both of them, you can actually get their information. Um, but Dr. Lustig on, um, sugar, the bitter truth. Thank you so much. Um, so I did finish watching it because I didn't want to throw the baby out with bath water and there were some good points in it. So one thing they didn't talk about, which I thought was really important, was, yeah, sugar can be really, um, excuse me, they talked, they demonized fat instead. So they went back to the old model of demonizing fat. In fact, they went on to say that they think what's going on now with us, everyone that talks about fat being good, me being one of them, um, that it's a travesty, that it's wrong, and that it's sugar, sugar's actually fine, that we're steering people away from sugar. I'm hoping that he meant to say carbohydrates and he was referring to the good carbohydrates and he didn't actually mean sugar. I'm hoping someone sort of took sound bites out of his interview and posted what they wanted to. Um, so I'm hoping that that's, I, it's just my thought. Um, I don't actually know, but I will say this eating sugar along with fat is actually really bad and inflammatory. And yes, it's bad. So we do tell you that, but eating healthy fat, there's just enough evidence now, you know, again, you know, Dr. Hyman has like so many studies in his book, but once again, they did not go into the differences between healthy fat and unhealthy fat. They said a little bit about saturated fat, not a whole lot. And they said a little bit about trans fat, but they really didn't differentiate like avocados and you know, olive oil and all these really healthy fats. We know the Mediterranean diet that people are healthier that eat like that. So I want to really point that out. Yes, if it's trans fat, yes, if it's certain, especially some saturated fats that come from industrial raised animals, I will give them that, no question. Those fats are terrible for you. So I think it's really important to, to point that out. Um, let's see, one of the, I've got my notes here, so I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, so they talked a lot about fast food and the percentage of people that eat um, the percentage of people that eat fast food, that poultry is the number one meat eaten because of fast food. Well, I would agree with them 100%. If we're talking about fast food here, or as they said, processed food, no question. There is not one thing healthy about it. I will give them that. But they, again, we, when we talk about our programs, we're not talking about fast food. We want that out of your life forever because I don't actually consider that food. Um, so let me just make that very clear. So they repeatedly failed to list studies. They did list a few good studies, like the dairy section, they listed some really good ones. He did post that meta analysis study, but then I couldn't find the part in the study he was talking about. Um, they failed to list some other studies to support some other things they were talking about. And in fact, there are a lot of really good studies on plant-based diets, like a lot. Had they done a good job on that, I was like, wait, I, you need to list the studies if you really want to support your work. And the one thing that bothered me is they talk a lot about the evils of meat and how toxic they are because of the environmental toxins, the animals that eat environmental toxins, but they didn't talk at all about the fact that the same holds true if you are eating pesticide sprayed, GMO, plant-based foods. So in fact, they stated one thing that I thought was pretty incorrect. Um, they stated that um, eating animals is worse because the animals eat so many plants that are sprayed with pesticides and that's worse for you. Well, that might be true to some degree because the fat in the animals holds more um, toxins and pesticides and all of that stuff. But 
you're not eating that much protein from those animals. You shouldn't be. If you are, then that's, yeah, then they would be accurate. You're not eating 100% animals, okay? So if you're eating that and then you're still eating pesticide sprayed plants, I'm failing to see how they're making their point there. If you are eating a plant-based diet that is still loaded with pesticides, berries are one of the plants that hold the most pesticides of all products. So if you go to, to environmental working group, Dot org and you look at the dirty dozen berries are terrible and guess what plant-based foods there are a lot of fatty plant-based foods avocados and things like that fortunately they have a thick skin but if you are getting pesticides and GMOs and all those things in your plant-based diet it's the same issue and they didn't point that out and that bothered me a lot actually um, so let's see um, another one. Oh, it was 17 studies in that. So that meta-analysis I talked about was 17 studies, not 11. Um, so that's where I couldn't find what he was talking about with when he said that they compared them to um, McMuffins. So let's see. I did like that they talked about the environmental pollutants. Didn't like that they, um, what they said about them. Let's see. Um... Claim that the food industry aims to confuse and mislead. I agree. The food industry does claim to confuse and mislead. Completely agree. But so does the health industry. Okay, so this is what bothers me is people are now more confused than ever. Um, people watch movies like this hoping to get education, and they do get some. But when it's a movie that leaves them feeling more confused than not, that bothers me. Um, because what you should be getting is something science-based, something that clarifies your questions and not scare you. It should give you a plan moving forward, um, and it's it shouldn't be confusing or misleading. It should be very clear. So, um, so th they also it, they made it sound like it's only meat. Again, the vegetables if they're not clean, um, that's a problem. And then they went into this idea that the scare tactic, which I've heard this one over and over and over, and I want to clarify this. There was a, they used the scare tactic of food poisoning. Okay, so food poisoning because of meat. And they really went after food poisoning with meat. I agree. I mean, I agree with you that we have to be careful of food poisoning because of meat. No question, right? I mean, we all hear about it on the news. You hear about it like crazy. But I just have to point this out to you. This was a 10-year study... Um, that actually was conducted by the Center for Disease Control showed that 50% of foodborne illnesses come from plants, not from meat. In fact, this is going to sort of blow your mind. 50% come from plants. One in five, only one in five come from meat and poultry. Um, salmon, E. coli, nor uh, norovirus, Hep A, Giardia, rotavirus, those are just a few that come from plants. In fact, there was a, I'm not going to name the restaurant, but it's a very well-known health food restaurant known for doing farm, you know, farm to table, um, seasonal vegetables. In my area, 200 people got sick from their spinach salad. So this happens a lot with imported lettuces and spinach and strawberries and things like that. So um, now I will give them this. It's a, it's a much smaller percentage, but the deaths, the highest death rate does occur from poultry when people do get sick. It's a much smaller percentage of people that get sick, but there's a higher death rate. So just want to point that out. Um, but the CDC says green leafy vegetables rate the highest, poultry the most deaths, beef is actually the lowest for illness and only 4% of deaths. That was actually surprising to me. I expected it to be much higher. Um, so, and it's also, they were very clear in all cases, mostly about kitchen, sanitation, food storage, hand washing, preparation, and of course, food quality, where it comes from, what, where are you getting your food from? So I just wanted to point that out. It bothers me when people do that, okay? I don't have, I don't get paid by either side. I don't care, but I do care about them telling the truth, about painting a full picture. So, um, 
yeah, so we already talked about the plants. Plants absorb just as much pesticide. I mean, you, they're just as bad for you if you're eating pesticide sprayed plants. Let's point, let's just be very clear about that. Um, all of your food needs to be clean. Let's see. I loved that they exposed big food, big pharma, big government as a problem. I think we all agree with that. All of my friends and colleagues agree with that. Big food, big pharma, big government is a huge problem. And I think this is where we... Sorry, I got cut off for a second. Hopefully I'm back. Um, so I think this is where we need to start. Um, they also went after antibiotics um, to animals. I agree. Um, you know, 70% of the antibiotics in our country go to industrial raised animals. I agree. We should really really be trying to not support that industry and be focusing on totally free range or organic naturally raised antibiotic free hormone free uh, meat and you should be eating much smaller amounts to be healthy not because I'm not making it a judgment call I'm just saying for your health smaller amounts and higher quality is much better if you are a meat eater if you're not great just be healthy and do it um, Government promoting this is this bothered me. And I actually liked that they 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 actually exposed this government that actually promotes programs that promotes our government actually has programs that promotes foods and they they actually pass laws against speaking out about dangers of certain foods that are bad for you. I was tripped out by that. So we have lobbyists. I knew that we had powerful lobbyists, just like the tobacco industry. And the whole rationale was uh, people should be smart enough to decide for themselves okay but they're not okay what about children what about low socioeconomic areas that's not necessarily true so to have laws speaking out against sort of bashing those foods and it's all because of, we all we know what it's all because of right I don't need to say it so it's a big business um, I like that they exposed that the pharmaceutical industry controls how doctors are managed. That is absolute, how doctors manage patients. That's absolutely true. The pharmaceutical industry controls how doctors manage patients. That's true. And they actually have a lot to do with medical schools. So I think this is a big part of the problem. Why doctor, why don't doctors recommend lifestyle change? And why don't doctors, you know, I'm always asked that question. Why don't doctors teach more about nutrition? Because they don't learn it. They learn about medication. They learn about illness not about wellness so I, I do like that they put that in there um, they don't show any downside to a vegan diet and that is I thought one thing I didn't like and one thing I thought that was sad because we actually so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually just go from the standpoint that we see 4,000 patients a month and we don't have a vested interest in your uh, your diet I just don't other than I do have a vested interest in your diet for Sorry, got cut off again. No vested interest in um, whether or not you decide to be vegan or a caveman. What I have a vested interest in is your important numbers. Get your blood checked. If you're going to be vegan, just do it in a healthy way. The word vegan is not synonymous with health. If you are eating french fries and coconut milk ice cream and donuts, okay, that's not healthy. And they also don't talk about the downside of being vegan. There are downsides. We see much more depression and anxiety, and yes, there are studies supporting that. I am going to be very fair. I have actually, I printed the studies because I wanted to be sure. To be fair, some of those studies that were done, they still aren't sure if the depression and anxiety is actually associated with people going vegan and vegetarian, or if people who are vegan and vegetarian tend to seek out that kind of a diet. So the chicken or the egg, right? Okay, no pun intended. But we're not sure if it's you know, which, which one comes first. So they're not 100% sure, but there's more than one study. There are n a number of studies now saying that there is a higher incidence of depression and anxiety. I don't think with my experience, and this isn't a study, this is anecdotal, and I'm just going to say this up front, because of the thousands of patients we have seen, I don't think it necessarily has to be so. I think that it does in part have to do with you individually as a person and what works for you. And it should be your personal profile that we help you to be the healthiest you can be. I also think that it has to do with education. And I think that's where this movie could have done a much better job. Education about how to be a healthy vegan. If you want to be vegan, by all means, be vegan. Have at it. Enjoy. But enjoy it 
by knowing how to do it so that you don't encounter nutritional deficiencies. It's not that hard if you know what to do. My friend Joel Kahn, who was in the movie, he's great. Um, one of the biggest things we see are obviously vitamin B12. You have to, you have to, be, you have to supplement. Tryptophan is another one. You got that's unfortunately one of the things you get from poultry. Um, the other thing, and that helps with serotonin. Uh, the other thing, and the big one, is the omega-3 fatty acids. Most people who do the vegan diet, not for health, but because of animal rights, won't take fish oil. And if you won't take fish oil, they think they can get the same benefit from taking plant-based omega-3s, and you can't. So you can, do so you can do a lot better by at least taking algae supplements. And we think that might be where some of the problems come in from the people who won't do that. Um, with the anxiety and depression. So just putting that out there, at least do the algae, the blue green algae supplements if you will not take fish oil. Um, but the people we have seen, that's the problem. The other problem, yeah, your cholesterol will drop. In most cases, your cholesterol will drop. So, not always. If you are eating a lot of rice and pasta and bread, your triglycerides will go up and your bad cholesterol, the density of the cholesterol will go up um, in, in a lot of cases. But overall, if you're eating doing it right, and you're not eating a lot of those starchy carbs, your cholesterol will drop, sometimes too low. And that can cause some anxiety and depression from what we've seen. So that we've actually seen people's cholesterol get so low that they're not producing the hormones they need to be healthy, happy, vibrant. So you need to be aware. That's what I mean by you can be a vibrant vegan. You just need to be educated, just like with anything. Just don't do it blindly and don't take someone else's advice. Be your own health advocate. Just know what you were doing, get the advice you need, and, um, you know, like I said, this, this can work for you. Um, they made this comment, cows eat more GMOs. What? Like, I have no idea what that means. Industrial raised animals, yeah, they eat garbage. It's terrible, and you shouldn't be eating those. But GMOs are GMOs. So if you are eating plant-based diet that are GMO, then you are eating GMOs. <laughs> So I'm confused about that comment. Um, they also didn't discuss, thing I don't like, they did not discuss. It's like, go plants and you're going to be all happy and free of problems. That's not true if you are eating, especially things like a lot of corn and soy and cheap oils. And it's, I'm sorry, you're going to increase your inflammation. So sugar, it's going to increase your inflammation and it's not going to take very long. So... And then I think they went off track when they started the whole civil rights issues. Um, he went off track with this whole thing about plant, that some of the um, the pork uh, the pork industry having their plants and what they were doing with their plants in certain um, black communities in the South. And I'm like, it went totally off off track because I know I know a lot of poor white farmer and farming communities. And I'm like, wait, what? And also the entire Mississippi River. If they've done studies where um, all through the Mississippi where obesity, obesogens are in the water and those communities are heavier, they are sicker and they're not all black. So I think making it a civil rights issue went off track, uh, maybe a socioeconomic issue, um, but maybe I speak out of turn there. I thought that that was a little odd. Um, let's see. What else was there? Um, I thought there was a lot of good information, but it was a little bit buried under a lot of hype and propaganda. And I think they were doing what they say the meat industry does, quite frankly. Um, probably what bothers me the most is not hearing the whole story and just hearing sound bites. So, by the way, stress and fear, <laughs> like you turn the news on and you hear stress, like you get all stressed out and you're fearful of what's going to happen next. That does more to harm your health than almost anything. Increasing those stress hormones does more to harm your health than almost anything. So, you know, that's what I didn't like about the scare tactics in the movie. Um, I thought the ending of the movie was the best part. The ending of the movie where they had testimonials, okay? Just like, why do you think we post testimonials on my page? Because it's inspiring. It's it, When you see that it works for other people... It's inspiring. It makes you want to do better. You realize this is a program you could probably do. The ending of the movie, they had, I don't know, five or six very inspiring stories. They had one of the American ninjas and they had, they just had all these people that were pretty ripped and high performing and very obviously very healthy and vibrant. And 
they were eating plant-based diets. I'm like, why didn't you start with that? To me, that you know, had me more hooked if you started with that because what other people say about how they feel doing a plant-based diet did more to inspire me if I were watching it than trying to scare me with something that I'm gonna go check out and find out isn't true. Um, so that's what I have to say. There was a lot in there that was really good. Some things I thought were hype. Overall, if you go to a plant-based diet, um, can you be absolutely vibrant? Absolutely. Just do it in a smart way. Get some help if you don't know how to do it. Do the research. It's the age of the internet. You can definitely do this and be very, very health, you know, healthy. If you do eat small amounts of clean meat, do it smart as well. Make it clean. Eat it like medicine, small amounts. Don't You don't need to go crazy with it. We'd rather you eat smaller amounts and make it high quality, but that needs to be true of your plant-based foods as well. Most of all, get your important numbers checked. Listen to your body. Do you feel better doing that or not better? Are your numbers reflecting that you are healthier and more vibrant or not? That's all we really want you to. I don't have an agenda. I don't have a dog in this fight. I just want you to be healthy and at least know what you're listening to. So think for yourself. Don't be a sheep. Don't follow other sheep off a cliff just because they go. Uh, just pay attention and be your own best health advocate. That is really what I would suggest, um, you know, with any movie you watch. So I hope this was helpful. As you can see, it was way too much for me to answer 50 times. So just wanted to put it out there for you to be able to analyze yourself. All right, take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.